Hello there, fellow country clubbers out there in YouTube land. Uh, no big deal. I just, just shot minus three at Los Santos. Uh, no big, you know what? Never mind. No big deal. Welcome in to part 20 Grand Theft Auto 5 with a therapist. It's so great to have you back for another episode. I hope it meets your expectations. It means a lot to me that you watch these streams. Give him a thumbs up. Comment down below. You know the drill at this point. I've said it at the beginning of every single stream. Let's go get into some... Let's go get into some trouble, huh? Also, if you want to hang out on Twitch, 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. Alright, so we've got Solomon. We've got F... Whoever that is for Trevor, so let's go switch, switch to Trevor. It does not, Victoria, unfortunately. Trevor, oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. At least I'm on the right side of the barrier. <laughs> That's a win. That it is. That it is. Howdy, folks. I'm just gonna show up like this. Trevor in the buff, baby. Uh, let the old girl rev up. Okay. Oh, I'm drunk. Okay, well this is not good. D didn't know I was drunk until I got in the car. And I am definitely drunk. And the cops know- Oh my god, and the cops apparently know it? What the hell? I'm sober. I'm sober now. The sound of your sirens hath sobered me up. Lucky miss! God damn it. Completely unnecessary. Have everybody on me like that. Well, oh, hello, sir. Yeah, he saw me. Went the other way. Whoa. Oh, Puentes, thank you for the five gifted subs, dude. I really appreciate that. stuffed animal on the front of my car. I don't know if I've seen that before. We're going to have to check that out. On this rare rainy day here in Los Santos. That's some kind of animal on the front of our car. In addition to road signs and debris and blood and sweat and tears. Oh, is a cop sitting outside of his apartment or his house? Just look at my house. He's a goddamn nut job. Calm down, sir. If you could just give me a detailed description. All right. Act natural. Definitely an addict of some sort. He smells like he hasn't bathed in weeks. White, middle-aged. Sir, we're gonna need a little more to go on than that. He, he's a white trash lunatic. I don't know what else to tell you. That describes half this town. Who, me? Well, not the half that I live in, thank God. <laughs> I'm president of a real estate company. You're set to receive a tidy insurance settlement on this property. Is that correct? 
What are you insinuating? Nothing, sir. Just trying to get all the facts. Oh, facts? You want facts? Look at my home! It's ruined! The home that's in foreclosure and you no longer live. If there's anything else you can tell us, Mr. Bernstein... Look, you'll, you'll have to give me a few minutes. I'm too upset to think right now. Here he's right there. Tony! Where's your wife? You owe me. Officers, here he is. This man is insane. He destroyed my house. Whoa, hey. No, wait a minute. You asked me. He's he's ruined my life. He's he's a, he's a stalker. He's he's an epsilonist. Yeah, get him. Freeze. Hands in the air. Take him down. Oh, Look, I'm just a guy trying to enjoy his whitey tidies. Oh man. Oh man. Come on. Love how the cops just cops just pull their guns out. Don't even don't even think about it. Just suns out, suns down, clouds out, guns out is their motto. And got them in this off-road utility vehicle. Looks awfully familiar to a spot I hid from the cops once before. What an asshole. Blame me. Whatever. You know, thank God I'm not wearing any clothes. They'd be all wet right now. Instead, I can just feel the rain drizzle down my shiny body. Probably needed a bath anyway. Do you think Trevor actually tries to be chaotic to unsettle people, or do you think it's a reflex? I think he absolutely does it on purpose. Uh, he is... We've talked about that quite a bit. He... I think Trevor absolutely knows what he's doing. He tries to throw people off kilter because that's how he's learned to gain power. You know, I must say, I think I'm a pretty good candidate for the see-through undies contest that we're having at the bar. What do you think, chat? What do you think? Would you vote for me? Sir, would you vote for me for the see-through undies contest? Sir, I'd appreciate it if you answered the question. I'll take that as a no. Could have just said no. I got the best loins in Los Santos. Undisputed wet undies contest champion. Yeah, exactly. Given his current attire, when Trevor pulled out his gun in front of the cops, or was it uh, holstered? Don't worry about it, baby. I wear two sizes too big so I can fit both guns in there. You know what I'm saying? You get, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I carry my pistol and my assault rifle. You know, you know what I'm saying? I got the old bazooka pack there in the in the. Okay. It's enough, Ryan. It's enough. Two balls in a cannon, baby.
really coming down, huh? I was Michael, I could make a bunch of dad jokes right now. Things all dads say when it gets rainy. Oh, the teddy bear that's on the front of my car is the one that we got at Wade or at uh, Floyd's. One that Trevor was banging. I miss rain like this. I also miss the rains down in Africa. Have you come across a recurring Phi Dan Ocean type meme for Grand Theft Auto 5 yet? I don't know if I have or not. Chat would have to answer that question. You make me sick. I don't care what you say. Shut your mouth. Shut it. Shut. Just keep it shut. You know full well exactly what you didn't say. It's no good. Well, you can be surrounded by your young girls and your threesomes and your parties, and you will be miserable. You could have had it all with me. A beige condo, matching woolen sweaters, walks on the beach, a little dog we lavish too much attention on because I'm too scared of getting fat to get pregnant. Everything. Well, fuck you. And I don't care that we just met last week, all right? Just stop looking at me. Don't look at me. Say something. Oh, I wish you were dead. I really do. Mm. Oh, I love you. Oh, let me take you away from all of this. You mm. psycho! You're gonna impregnate my ex by a surrogate! Me? Me the psycho? No, you are the craziest fucking chick I've ever met! I love you! You're thin! You're irrationally angry! Nothing you say makes any sense! You are completely have no control of your emotions! We have nothing in common! Oh, baby, we're made for each other! Prove it! On the bike! Now! Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, baby, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you are just perfect, crazy cakes. is going on I am I am all glitched out okay well oh Jesus perfect place for a police chase all right we're doing it this way because it was all glitched out come on Trevor haul ass buddy you're aerodynamic you're slick you're wet you're sh you're shiny you're rounded you're lean look at you go buddy Enable you! You're so gonna crash! Already did. Already did. Just think of all the angry revenge sex! I am not having sex with you! Get that through your thick head! Okay, well jack me off into a cop! Slap me around! We got options, baby! You need help! We both do! It's a recipe for disaster! That's why it's so perfect! You got this! Woo! I win! Come on! Come on what? Sex reward! That's how this works. You're deluded! Spread your genome in a gym sock! Oh, fuck! I love you! Hold me! <laughs> Went to thank you for the thousand bits. Holy shit. Well, that was... That was wild. I think she'll come around. Can 
I got a bike to show for it. All right, what, what else we got? That that was. Uh, Franklin. We still have that guy. We gotta go. I'm somehow have to get Franklin up on top of that building. Ah, Jesus. Just need some juice and Fleetwood Mac and Trevor could be a TikTok sensation. He sure could. Alright, so we're going to find a getaway vehicle first. I think that's probably important. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. We are right by the airport. Excuse me, fellas. Oh. Never mind. Grab this. doing it again chat we're gonna make it work this time i think the reason that i couldn't do anything last time was because we had the cops on us so i have to make sure i lose the cops first and then fly around until this guy reappears and then we're gonna parachute down onto the tower also this is the first time i think we've jumped into a tesla in this game all well, the coil here but oh boy Oh, boy. Okay. A hardy machine. Woo! This thing flies. Which I suppose makes sense. Oh! Literally flying! Okay. Wow! Okay. That's not what I meant, but... insanity what is happening oh my god saved it this is uh this is not my finest showing. Oh! Try this again. Try, let's try. Let's try this again, friends. This crazy ass highway system here. It's just, it's, it's the rain, chat. It's just, it's a little slick out here. A little slick out here. Not used to that. You know, we, we West Coasters don't really know how to drive in the rain because we're so used to it just being sunshine all the time. All right, now this time, Ryan, stay. Let's stay a little bit calmer here. Let's not ramp off of this. There we go. All right, now the nice thing is we're going to go into the airport nice and silently. Shouldn't raise any ruckus. Hey, Rick, got a problem? No, I don't. Let me in. I'm gonna crack your head open. No, you're not. Let me in. No. God damn it. Air support is en route. There you are, old faithful. Go! Go! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking once again. Uh, we're going to be taking off on an emergency takeoff. 
due to high police presence in the area. I ask that you please fasten your seatbelts. We're expecting some minor turbulence here uh, in the form of bullets. We're going to hope that our engines hold up. Just remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you start to panic, we can fly a plane on one engine. So just chill, okay? Nice and smooth. There's one fast helicopter. If it can keep up with a jet engine. Alright, there we go. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and just do a nice climb. We've got about a cruising velocity. We're gonna, we're gonna, or cruising altitude. We're gonna shoot for somewhere about 10,000 feet. Uh, uh, we're okay. Remember what I told you? Remember what I told you, ladies and gentlemen? And non-binary friends on this plane, just remember what I told you. That we can fly on one engine. We were expecting turbulence anyway. You're not going to know the difference. Just relax. Relax. We'll get us to our destination here shortly. If you'll look out the left... Side, you got a beautiful view of Los Santos. We're gonna need the police to get off our asses. There we go, nice. All right, so we're gonna take a nice tour here. It looks like we have our mission available to us again. Make our nice, again, steady climb here. We've reached about 3,000 feet. Now I gotta make sure that I dump this plane in the ocean, probably. Oh boy. Keep climbing. We're at 4,000 feet. How's the engine doing? Uh, we're doing okay. All right. I think this is probably pretty good. We're going to dump the plane in the ocean. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you came here to swim. Okay. Ah. Oh, is that going down on the highway? Oh. All right. I think we're okay. Oh, what a beautiful evening. Up here where you can't breathe. Just gonna chill. We're gonna wait for the cops to go away. Oh man. Just don't look up for the parachute. Don't look for the parachute. That's all. Come on. Come on. Come on, go away, cops. Go away. Holy shit, come on.
There we go. There we go. All right, we're in business chat. Here we go. I don't know. Oh, this is going to be close. I might have I might have gone a little too far out to the coast. What do you think, chat? You think I got this? This is a great opportunity for me to just say how much I appreciate all of you being here. Thanks for hanging out with me while I do ridiculous shit. I miss this. This is going to suck. I think we're okay. This is gonna be this is gonna be a tight window. It's because you didn't thank the bus driver. God damn it! No, they didn't thank me. I was the bus driver. I was the bus driver. Why do I feel like this is gonna carry us to the end of the stream tonight? Yeah, we're gonna land up here and be like, all right, that's it. Thanks for being here. I think we're doing okay. My, my calculations were correct at about 4,000 feet. Oh, man. Oh, man. The anticipation is real. Oh, man. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? That would be really helpful to know here. You just got to stay constant. You got to concentrate. Eye on the prize here. Eye on the prize. I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm feeling good. Feeling dun 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 dun. Da 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 do 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 do. All right, moment of truth. This is gonna take full concentration here. Full concentration here. We are coming in hot. Slow up. Okay. All right, we're good. We're good. I'd rather overshoot it than undershoot it. We're good. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. We got plenty of surface area to work with here. Plenty of surface area to work with here. No need to panic. It's a little windy up here. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Franklin. No! It's like the ultimate challenge. We're going to have to have one stream just dedicated to can I actually freaking do this. God damn it. God damn it. We fell a long way there. We fell. Dude, at this point, Franklin is like Humpty Dumpty. Shit, Oh, we tried. It's, uh... Franklin is the ship of Theseus at this point. 
Like, do we even have Franklin anymore? Is Franklin even Franklin? Too close. We just have his soul. Stem cells are doing the work. Exactly. Ship of Franklin. Oh, I don't want that. Not interested. Oh, I have to be Michael, don't I? Why am I coming here as Franklin? Oh, man. Absolute noob move. Thank God Michael's right around the corner. What are you doing, Michael? <laughs> Great lunch, amigo. Glad you enjoyed yourself, Mike. Oh, I guess I could have done the God damn it, I could have done the getaway car with Franklin. Oh well. I would guess Michael's car is probably suitable as a getaway car. Oh boy. Hollywood. Are right, you going to be good to me this time, sir? Sir? You want something? Yeah, let me in, dude. Thank you. My gallivanter. Eliminate Rocco. Jesus, we're just going to straight kill him. Okay. I. Uh, that's. Alright. Desperate times call for desperate measures, I suppose. Excuse me. Oh, I was really hoping I could bank off that car. Excuse me. Excuse me. Follow, pardon me. Pardon me, folks. Oh, God. Ah! Idiot. Oh god, I'm gonna hit the same car! God damn it. God damn it. Not a fan of the way this car handles. Now. 
God damn it! Oh, man. No you should feel bad about that. You should feel bad about what you've done. Feel bad about it. And give me your car. Yeah. Give me your car. This can be used as a getaway vehicle. Hide it in a discreet location. Alright, I will. It's a very conspicuous car, though. Discreet location. This location looks pretty discreet. Right? Michael, I've put your name in the credits of the film. Ooh, Solomon. You sweetie pie. Not a discreet location. All right, discreet location, discreet location. Fine. Good, nice, discreet location. Be a good discreet place. Mm. Let's go. This looks pretty discreet, maybe. Maybe. Put your name in the credits for the film. Associate producer, Michael DeSenta. Nice. Park somewhere secluded, then call with the location. What constitutes a secluded? What about down here? This is secluded, right? Hey, it's Lester. I don't listen to my... as secluded as it gets. What are we doing here? Over here, maybe? You know, of all the... So, here's what's frustrating about Rockstar's game design sometimes. Like, of all the missions to not give me a yellow marker on to go to, lucky, they choose this. Like, their definition of secluded is obviously different than mine. And I have absolutely no direction on where a good place to park this car would be. Like, they handhold you so often in this game, and then... Like, is this secluded? Literally a parking garage. Holy shit. Like, I'm about to give this up. When we did this with Franklin, we parked like in a. Yo, what's up? I 
damn, man. Am I missing something, chat? This seems secluded. like a freaking I could have tried I could have attempted to land on the building like four times by now really Rockstar what is the, what do you consider to be a discreet location oh my god I give up man Figure this out elsewhere. I don't have time for this shit. Apparently alleys and suburb neighborhoods work well. I've been through so many alleys. Thank you. See you, Slick. Devin, the hell are you doing here? Oh boy. It's over, Michael. You done good, kid. You kept this bullshit up long enough to help me trigger a fantastic insurance payout when the plug is pulled. I love you. You're you're like my spirit brother now. Where's Solomon? He's out getting the negatives of film, whatever the fuck it is. The last dinosaur in town is about to get fossilized. What are you talking about? Look, the movie's nearly done, so if the plug's pulled now, the investors, meaning us, get a massive insurance payout. Meanwhile, I can use that to get the other major shareholder, the old bastard's idiot son, to agree to tear this relic down and let me redevelop the area for condos. Ah, and in this economy, the city's gonna let me build tax-free. I might even get some rebates. Oof. It is a brilliant thing, and it is all thanks to you and Molly's eye for the details of the insurance policy. Michael, they're fucking us. The suits, and they don't even wear suits. Wolves in turds clothing. Try not to take it too badly, Mr. Richards. Were you ever a human being? Look, people used to like films. Now they like what? Videoing themselves, beating off on their iFruit phones. Don't blame me. I'm a very spiritual person. I feel badly about this. But evolution is evolution. Gentlemen, Molly. Namaste. Can I take the film now, Mr. Richards? My plane leaves in 25 minutes. Can't we do something? At least let me finish the picture, then close the place down. I'm afraid our timetable doesn't allow for that. Goodbye, Mr. Richards. Damn. Where the hell is she going with that movie? She is taking the only copy offshore, somewhere nice and discreet. Analog. God, it's certainly got its complications. Michael, can you do something? No, he can't do anything, pal. It's an inevitability. <sighs> Man, he is... Uh, he is a really scary person. Is You know, at some point, you ask yourself, why would a person continue to do this stuff? Like, why do this? Why antagonize this guy, break it down, build condos, get more get more resources like at some point it just becomes about the thrill of the chase like this is essentially hunting for this guy or it would be like me playing video games or guitar like this guy's hobby at this point is to wield his power in whatever way he can and gather resources for the sake of gathering it and it reminds me of that scene in the dark knight where the Joker's with all of his minions and there's all this money in the warehouse. And he sets fire to it. He's like, it's not about the money. It's about wanting to watch the world burn. 
And Devin Weston is an example of this, where he is essentially like, this is fun for me. I, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to wield as much power as I can, show everybody that I'm a bigger deal than they are. And it's the sport of it. He is so far removed from connecting with anybody in any kind of real way that it becomes easy for him to do this because he sees humans as pawns. He has effectively objectified everybody in his life. And when people do that, they are terrifying to go up against, especially when they have power and leverage. Because there's not really a way you're going to crack that shell. This guy would have to decide he wants to care about something besides stroking his own ego and dominating everybody he comes across. And that's a decision he's got to want to make. And I think that's what makes him, I mean, he feels like an immovable object. And it's scary because of the amount of clout he has to just throw his weight around with no real repercussions at all. There are people like this that exist. And it's terrifying. My wife got screwed by a yogi. And now I'm getting screwed by a yogi? Fuck that! I'm a producer! Nobody fucks with my film! Ugh. Okay, okay, the airport. Go to the airport and find Molly. We're taking the Corvette. Or I guess we're taking the... Whatever this is. With this awful interior. Okay. What the fuck do you want? Here we go. Slick, you're not thinking. Hey, I'm a producer. I'm producing the goods. Don't do this, Slick. Think. She's got a police escort. She's on the way to my personal hangar. Security at the airport worked for me. I just want to get the film back before she does anything rash with it. Molly's highly strung. She's not going to stop and talk it out with a deranged killer chasing after her. That ain't who I am today. Look, I don't want to hurt anyone. I just want to get my movie. Slow down and use your brain. Fun time is over. <sighs> yeah, I mean, so there you go, right? That's what makes Devin so terrifying. He has literally everybody in his pocket. And you can buy people up with resources. And you, you wield some power over them, you you control their resource allocation, and all of a sudden you got people eating out of the palm of your hand. And that's on Devin. It's easy to blame his minions and say, well, you don't have to say yes. And sure, they could unionize and say, okay, never mind, we're not going to work with this guy. But he's greasing their palms in a way that's meaningful, and that's how he gets away with this shit. What's she up to? All right. Shots, please calm down. We're here to escort you to the hangar. Wait a minute. What? Oh my god, I'm controlling the car. Oh my god. understand that come on I don't understand if I'm supposed to just use that camera all right whatever it doesn't matter I know people can change but do you think Devin is too far gone I don't really believe in the concept of people being too far gone there, there's not there's not a such thing as a person being too far gone dead is when a person is too far gone besides that it just means it requires a significant the higher amount of activation energy to get a person to change. Like if Devin wants to change or is going to change, it's going to require huge amounts of effort in order to do that. It's not impossible, but it, it, if he, if he decides he doesn't want to lean into that and he has the power to be able to do that, then he's too far gone from the sense that he's not doing the things he needs to do to come around and hasn't experienced sufficient consequences for his actions, 
But I don't believe in the idea that somebody is too far gone because then that makes you throw your hands up. And it also starts excusing their behavior because you say, well, that's just how they are. They're not going to come around. There's an enabling aspect to seeing somebody as being too far gone. And people should be held accountable at all times for how they interact and how they behave. All right, I'm not using Weasel News helicopters. I'm just going to follow her. Oh, how about that? Oh shit! What is she doing? Whoa! Oh wow, did that cop car get pushed back by the jet engines? That's amazing. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh! 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh man, I got my transmission lights on. We're in trouble. Oh boy. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. What's she up to? Oh, we gotta redo that. God damn it. Wait a minute, Munchie. You just got ads even though you're subbed? Wait, did all of you just see ads? I'm gonna be real pissed if all of you saw ads. We're going to do it right this time. Man, imagine being the pilot of this plane. Oh, 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 the plane. <laughs> God. I'm glad I took this car. He wants to kill me. He wants to kill me. Who, me? On the floor, lady. On the fucking floor. Oh shit! Oh no, dude! No, no! Oh no! Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy shit! Ah, that was nasty and needless. Oh my god! Trespassing! That's the most. Oh my god! I will survive. 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 I didn't survive. 
What a way to go. Holy shit. Where the hell? Oh. Try it one more time. Come on, Michael. Go fire it up, baby. Hey, you got fire it up. To clean up. Leave me alone. Fire it up. Come on. Come on. We're okay. Ooh. That was in town. How's everybody doing? Oh, okay. Damn, what a way for that chick to go. Holy hell. At least I got my film reel. You know? Alright, we lost the cops. Let's bring her back down. Find a way to get a fire truck. Alright, here we go. Alright, chat. I loved you once, Tony. But there's nothing between us. Now We're gonna find a good landing spot. Dictation. Really? We're doing this now? I just watched Devin Weston's legal counsel get juiced in a jet engine. Oh, that Molly woman? Oh, Lord, that's horrible. You have no idea. She panicked, went crazy, and ran into it. But I saved the print, so we still got our movie. You believe that analog thing? It's all digital. We have backups everywhere. I mean, <laughs> we're shooting on green screen. Well, you could have told me. I'm sorry. Look, I thought you knew. The edit's nearly done, and we've got to get it out before they can screw us again. I've greenlit a premiere. That will stop them from burying us. A premiere? For Meltdown? Okay. Can you invite my family? They can finally have something to be proud of me for. Of course. <laughs> it's already on its way by courier. All right. <laughs> I'll get ready. It was an American divorce, by the way. The movie quote. Obviously. <laughs> Sorry, folks. This vehicle is unsuitable to use for the getaway, it says. Damn. All right. Sorry, folks. Uh, just had to, had to make an emergency landing. All while maintaining a conversation on the phone. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Everybody's pissed. I'll take this. Ma'am, it's not like you're going anywhere anyway, lady. Oh my god. Amazing. If you try to land a plane on the freeway with passengers, can you use the HOV lane? I don't see why not. Holy shit. All right. That was good. Nobody will ever suspect anything. All right, let's go find ourselves a fire truck, fam. I think what we probably need to do is we need to set fire to something. And then we're going to let the fire department come take care of it. I'm thinking that's our best option here. We'll just yoink one of the fire trucks. Oh, my God. All right, so if we were going to light something on fire, perhaps it would be I'm just I'm just spitballing here. Uh, grenade. 
grenade sticky bomb. Well, I'm I suppose Okay. Fire! There's a there's there's a fire. Somebody call the, the somebody call the fire department. This is 911. What emergency service do you require? Fire department. Thank you. The fire department are en route to your location. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I asked for the fire department. need to hold off. I just need to hold off until the fire department gets here. That's all I need. Fire department. There they are. All right, there they are. Come on. Come on. So sorry guys, thank you for your service. I'm sorry you died in action. Oh shit. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you died in action. Oh god, get no 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 Michael, get in! I hit the wrong button! Go! Get in the get in the goddamn truck, dude. Can't see shit in here. Got a fire truck. Okay. All right. Just gotta find a spot to lay low to the fire truck. Turn the siren off. We're going full silent mode. Pull into this little complex. I'm just responding to a just responding to a call. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh. 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 No. No. We can get out of this. 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 We can do this. Come on. Oh, come on, fire truck. Come on. Come on. Just had to lubricate a little bit with the water. Come on. All right, we're still in business. Oh. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, man. the choppers man we're gonna have to be careful of the choppers I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get down low 
A uh, highway is not a good option. All right, we go right. All right, we gotta find a spot. Here we go. Maybe, oh, I don't know. I don't feel good about this. Stay low, Michael. They'll never suspect you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't look over to the left. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the left. Yeah, turn around, turn around. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Yes! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Lord, what a... What a series of events there. Woo. How are we looking? Let's assess the damage. Oh, it's not so bad. This show will be fine. Yep, pull off, please. Thank you. Thank you. Pull off to the side. Thank you, thank you very much. Yep, yep. Fire truck coming through. We got an emergency. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for your courtesy. Thank you. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Here we go. Thanks, number 32. Nice. Nice. Okay. That's taken care of. All in today's work, chat. Hey, Lester, we got a fire truck parked around the back of your place. Good work. Call me when the rest of the prep's taken care of, okay? You got it, buddy. I'm ready. Hide a vehicle in a discreet location. Well, let's get ourselves a getaway vehicle then. This seems like it might be decent. Yo. Yeah, what's up, man? Need your car. Thank you. What is this shit? This vehicle is unsuitable to use. Oh man. All right. I need four seats, I guess. How about a Hummer? Hummer seems like it might be decent. That would, that would fit enough, guys. This vehicle can be used. Hide in a discreet location. All right, perfect. Am I already in a discreet location? This feels discreet. I like I just really don't understand what is considered to be discreet at this point. Like Did I just hear a cat? Yeah, you did.
Alright, so maybe we bring this over here. Come on, does it get more discreet than that? Jesus. How about this? Usually what happens is it'll give me a prompt and it'll say this is this is fine this works this is discreet and I'm not getting that prompt which is why I'm frustrated because it's like howdy folks How about this? This seems pretty discreet. There we go. Holy shit. Oh. Hey, Les. That getaway car is parked where we need it. All right, give me the location. La Mesa. Then I guess we can't put it off any longer. I'll get word out to the guys. Come out to my office and speak to me. Good shit. Let's do it. Holy hell, man. What a... What a pain in the ass. Sorry, sorry, folks. Okay. Alrighty. Hey, how you doing? Ah, pretty good under the circumstances. About to knock off a federal government building. Oh, meanwhile, my psychotic former BFF is trying to figure out a way to kill me. But hey, the meds are kicking in. So life's good. Well, exactly. Franklin got us what we need. Put those on. Then what? Then head in there and uh, rig up a slightly more sophisticated fire trap than we've got here. So, I'm guessing drapes and scented candle aren't gonna do the trick, huh? No, 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 no. We will have incendiaries and a remote device. Now, they need to be strategically placed so we can ensure that we still have access to the server and that the structure maintains its integrity. Now, once you get out, trigger the bombs, meet up with Franklin and the crew, and we'll intercept the emergency call, and you all go in as firemen. Oh, got it? Yeah, I got it. Sounds a little idiotic. Well, under the circumstances, it was the best I could do. And if you remember, you were the one who chose to do it like this. Oh, come on. But, you know, Trevor has a point about you. You whine too much. Yeah, fuck you. Oh, don't even try it. Don't worry. It, it's always the... Uh, we've talked about this a little bit, but this is another example of this. Michael very much has this idea that the only person that can talk shit about him is himself. You know, Trevor was right about you. You whine too much. You complain all the time. He's not wrong. M Michael doesn't accept criticism from other people. I think because it hurts even more. 
I think that's why in some ways he tries to get out in front of it. He he sees when he gets out in front of it and he uses his own self-loathing, he is able to put himself in a position to be victim as if this is something that it's an affliction that he has. Whereas when other people say you're selfish, you're arrogant, you whine too much, that doesn't put him in a victim position. He can't figure out a way to spin that to make him the dramatic, tragic figure in that. And instead, it means maybe he has to face the fact that he could do something about it and either doesn't know how or doesn't want to. Even Lester is pointing it out to him. I don't... I, I realize that there are exceptions to what I'm about to say, but something that I think is very important for all of us to understand is that if you get feedback from one person, that usually means that it is specific to that person, and you can take it with a grain of salt. If you start to get consistent feedback from multiple people in your life that are in a pretty good position to be able to evaluate what you're bringing to the table at that point you really got to start asking yourself is there something to what these people have to say it doesn't mean you have to do anything about it but if you got 10 people telling you that the way that you engage with them is very off-putting it starts to sniff a little bit more close to objective relational truth as opposed to being a one-off where a person's got their own agenda they're operating off of. And what we're seeing in a lot of ways is Michael starting to get that diversified source of feedback. And it will be interesting to see how he handles that. And yeah, I'm surprised that Lester thinks that the fire truck option is worse. Like the other one seemed absolutely ridiculous. Going to the FIB. In my Mustang. Mike, you ready for me at the bureau? Yeah, it's almost that time, Frank. Link up with Moda and Welsh. Get the fire truck. Be ready to go as soon as I say so. Shit, we'll be good to go. Me and Gus will, at least. You... I don't know, dog. We've already singled out Hugh as a liability. Not good. Sounds like we need Trevor. Wentis, thank you very much for, th for the bits. I really appreciate it. All right, we're close. Here we go. Enter the FIB building and go to the turnstile. Maintenance. Not so good. And I don't do homeboy well. I'm a classically trained actor, not a thug. All right, play it cool. You're supposed to be here. Is it your first day? Go through the turnstile and head up. Okay, thank you. Never been in an FIB building before. Yeah, they keep changing the contractors. Yeah, because guys like me keep losing their jobs and agreeing to do this for less. All right, head up. Don't blame the workers, Michael. Don't blame the workers. Blame the people who are employing them. You're better than that. Alright, we're gonna do some mopping. I like it. 49th floor. I clean up this server room. It's dirty. I 
Nice. Good. All right. Attention to detail. Ah, shit. Ah. Oh. Plant the bomb in the locker. There you go. Why not lock it? Also, how did the detector not pick up a bomb? You would think that they would... Just a maintenance guy. And with all the chaos tonight, this is a welcome respite. Wish I could put some wet floor cones out. Nice little facility we got here. Wow, look at all these guys. Damn it. You get why Michael didn't want to do this. Okay, plant the bomb in the restroom. Okay. Oh, I need to I wanna I need to mop this up. This is gross. You know you stay too late when the mopping dead show up. All right, all right, I'm leaving. Hey, get out of here, dude. Doesn't dry his hands. Bold. All right. I hear that, DL. All right. <laughs> Take the mop and bucket to back to the closet. Okay. Can I go this way? Let's try it. Fellas, how you doing today? Another janitor? Was the last one a heart attack or a budget cut? All right, easy. When are you going to get out of here when I log my OT for the week? Man, it's not about being effective, it's about What is vectors on a graph, man? Yeah, limiting civilian freedom is a great substitute to actually doing anything. Long may it continue. Yeah, I gotta get back to it. Yeah. <laughs> God, that water must be gross just standing like that. Ugh. Go to the elevator and leave the office. Perfect. I came here to mop a couple spots on the 49th floor. Job's done. I did my part. Woo, long day's work. Long day's work. Yeah, man, my arms are sore from all that mopping. They don't work so hard. Building's closing any second.
All right. Good. Hey, charge is set. I'm out of the building. Nice. Hey, dog, we right around the corner. We got your gear in here with us. Shit's in motion, people. We raiding the bureau. Y'all ready for this? In and out, Holmes. Let's do it. All right. Full fire crew. Ready to go. Hop in, Mike. Trigger the fire bombs, Frank. I'll get my turnout gear on. Use the phone to detonate C4. Will do. This is gonna be nuts. Rocking and rolling. So Lester hijacked the emergency signal, right? Yep. We'll be the only idiots running into that burning mess. So don't worry. Pull it up there by the curb. Of overacting like it takes no training to be a fireman. Don't worry, folks, we got this under control. Go to the elevator. Aren't you not supposed to take the elevator? Shouldn't I have to climb 49 flights of stairs? This just seems like terrible protocol. Elevator. Go. Oh, Alright, Lester says these elevators should still be fine. Was he on that industrial strip painkillers or that hallucinatory weed at the time? Yeah, probably a little bit of both. Cool, dog. Thanks for clearing that shit up. We gotta go across. Take the stairs to the top floor. All right, we're going across to the far stairwell and up to the top floor. Man, try enforcer, welcome in. My brother-in-law's a firefighter. I'd have to ask him how many flights of stairs he's ever gone up in his gear. Go. Keep hustling, fellas. We're in good shape. In good shape. We're on the 53rd. The is this way. To the containment drive. Explosives on the door. It's hot. Look out. Removable drive in the server stack on the far wall. All right. Got it. Hey, we got the containment drive. Come on. Follow Michael out of the building. We ain't got long. Something's. Oh, shit. Something's gonna go wrong. Something's gonna go wrong. Oh. Oh my god. So, in a, this is, I mean, this is outrageous, but it's a great example. It's a great time for me to be able to explain this, as I have in a couple of other playthroughs. This is a crisis situation. Crisis situations require a couple things in order to be navigated effectively by humans. The first one is you need clear and direct leadership. You define that leadership ahead of time. 
And that leader is the one who makes the call. This is why you have the leader and then you have people who step up in terms of rank if, the le if something is to happen to the leader. You want to give clear instructions in the affirmative, meaning you want to say what to do instead of what not to do. So things like follow me, go to the right, watch for this, right? Don't say, you wouldn't want to say things like don't go left, don't look down, like, eyes forward, look for an exit, etc. They need to be clear, succinct, and direct. And it needs to come consistently from one person as best as you can, although there may be times where you need to problem solve it. It is super important to remain as regulated as possible. I don't like to use the word calm because there is physiological arousal when crisis situations happen like this. It's not about being stone cold in these moments. It's about harnessing that energy and directing it to focusing on what you need to focus on. In this case, it's finding an exit. In some cases, it might be addressing the problem, whatever it may be. So you want to stay as committed to your plan and to listening and to leadership as you possibly can. And you want to stay as regulated as you can through breath, through your training, where you probably learn to de-escalate yourself and to maybe be a little bit more desensitized to this. And you draw upon your expertise. And in some ways, you allow all of those hours of training to develop a really healthy autopilot where you know the core basics of what it is you have to do. Now you fill in the gaps with the specifics of the situation. And last but not least, you work with as many known variables as you can. You work with what you have, what you see, what has been clearly defined, rather than trying to make guesses based on what you don't know. You, you only do that if you absolutely need to. So Michael has taken it upon himself here to be the leader and the director, which makes a lot of sense to me. And everybody else is going to follow behind. That's crisis management 101, and we'll see if they employ those skills as we go through this. Because this is, a, this is not a situation that any of these four guys is trained and prepared for. Firefighters go through a shitload of training in order to be able to do what they do. And we got four guys that are just acting like firefighters. The door won't budge. Breaking it down. Okay, ready up. Oh, shit. Franklin, see if you can get Welsh up on his feet. Ah, shit, man, he's dead. Oh, man, that we sucks. We gotta leave him. Let's go. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, stay focused. Where are, you, where are you looking? Where are you heading? Through these convenient openings in the walls. Holy shit. Oh. How would they know that? Oh, I guess. Wh or why would they go into the burning building? Holy shit! Really? Just get out of here. That guy is committed to his job. Oh my god! What you screwing me for? These guys would never survive this. We're in full fire. We're in full fire suits. No way these guys survive this. What if a leader falters or makes a bad call during a crisis situation? Better to keep following or have somebody else take control? It depends on the situation, Try. Absolutely depends on the situation. Get 
there's this, this whatever. I'm gonna suspend my disbelief because it's Grand Theft Auto, but there is absolutely no reason why these guys would come up here, nor would they survive it. Can't you see the building's burning? I'm gonna run out of oxygen. Yeah, no, absolutely not, the lounger. It's the most unrealistic shit ever. Does my sniper still have the thermal scope on it. You sucker. Oh my god, man. Gotta make sure you pick up their money. I'll kill you. Just get out of here. What you screwing with me for? Hope so. Fuck. All right, this is our way out. We gotta get these doors open. What's up? Hey, give me a hand. Briggs, come on. I see it street level. I fucking hope so. My God. Everyone okay? Terra Firma. Hey, let's get the fuck out of this bill, right? Before it comes down on our head. Well, we got helmets on. I'm gonna have to lose the cops in a fire truck again. We're just gonna bail. Yeah, we're just we're just leaving. Take us to the getaway car. See you later. Yep, see you later. We'll let the other guys take care of it. Not shady at all. Right, see you later. Alright, we all gotta change before we get there. At some point soon, an APB will go out looking for firemen. We cannot be playing dress up. 
up when that happens. Yeah, you think? We need to get to the ride and torch this fire truck as soon as possible. I'm working on it. Yeah, because if they connect the dots, man, I don't know. Man, I'm working on it. Any minute they'll be looking for us. All right, I mean, Michael. Those guys in the building you took down. If they knew. Okay. What Michael is doing right now is classic. Absolutely classic. Michael is freaking out. And Franklin is staying relatively calm. Michael is... He's, he's subconsciously holding all of the anxiety himself. He believes that he's holding all the anxiety himself. So he's saying all these things out loud. Trying to process them. And seek reassurance for it. At a terrible time. Because what that's going to do is inject more anxiety into the system. Franklin keeps trying to shut him down. All right, man, I got it. Stop. Shut the hell up, basically. And Michael keeps going. Friends, when you're experiencing a huge amount of anxiety, whether you're in a crisis situation or not, and you perceive the other people around you to not be matching the intensity of your anxiety, it doesn't mean you're crazy. It doesn't mean you need to seek a, a bunch of reassurance. What it might mean is that you need to take accountability for your anxiety and just sit there and experience it without trying to leak it out into everybody around you. There is very real validation sometimes that people perceive themselves as receiving when other people around them also are heightened. It's a anxiety version of Misery Loves Company. You don't want to be offloading your anxiety into the other people and injecting it into the group, particularly when there's something you're trying to get done. If somebody else appears to be calm, it may be that they're anxious and just managing it differently than you are. But this is all about Michael's anxiety, and he needs to withhold that. He needs to withhold the behavioral manifestation of it, which is talking about it in the way that he is. He's okay to feel anxious. I'm sure everybody in the fire truck is. What you want to regulate is how you respond to it. Who else is gonna know? It ain't worth thinking about, dog. Trust right? Me. It I'm is. Get us there as fast as I can. All right. Shit. Shit. I just don't want to run into something. Man, y'all don't want to run into Trevor, bro. That's who you don't want to run into. <laughs> You're right. So, uh, take us to our get out, avoiding the cops, the feds, and my dear friend Trevor Phillips. All right, man. I'll try. Try real hard, okay? Well, this was a pretty good spot because I can hide the fire truck in the tunnel as well. What if Michael had time to get back on us in his suit? Destroy the fire truck. Staying nice and calm, quiet. All right. I feel a whole lot better. Take us to Lester's. Okay. Now that we're clear, I could probably tell you people. I didn't think we were going to make it out of there. Uh, oh shit. Was getting, we lost a dude, man. Oh, yeah, shit. I don't like speaking ill of the department, know what I'm saying? But that dude was in over his head. Yeah, he wasn't top draw, but I thought we could carry him through it. I guess I thought wrong. Well, anyway, we made it out, so we got that to be thankful for. Hugh's people will get his paycheck and the standard expenses. Yeah, man, unfortunately, Hugh wasn't really cut out for this work, man. His mind was on other things. Why you say that? Man, he told me he was writing a screenplay. Did he give you a copy? I'd like to read it. Why? Well, you forget. I'm in the business. This guy gets killed in a raid on the bureau and we produce his picture? There's some free press. They call that, uh, pre-awareness. Yeah, all right, man. Sure. How very fine would. Two instances right there that confirm this idea that Michael is... A bit more self-absorbed than we might like him to be. First of all, he is looking at the group as fully alive because he himself is alive. He doesn't even take inventory of the other people that were with him, maybe besides Franklin. 
And then to immediately say, oh, we should get the screenplay of this guy because I can benefit from it. I mean, he's constantly angling for his own gain. And in a lot of ways, he's pulling other people along with him and doing that. Like, everybody is a bystander to some extent in Michael's own path to selfish fulfillment. And again, that's fine if that's how Michael wants to present. But if I'm in this group, if I'm Franklin or if I'm Gus, I'm second think I'm second guessing whether I want to continue to engage with Michael, especially if we're going to do dangerous shit. Because he, or at the very least, I'm going to anticipate that if Michael has a choice between the group and himself, he's probably going to choose himself. He did it all the way up in North Yankton nine years ago. He's done it several times in the times that we've seen him in these situations in the game. Like Michael has very much built his sense of self into being the one thing that he wants to protect and, and engage with at all costs, even at the expense of others. I mean, he's showing his cards in a very profound way. But the thing is, we can focus so much on, well, Michael should change, Michael should change, Michael should change. And sure, we might want that. But also, the boundaries between Franklin and Gus and Trevor and Lester and Michael can change. If there's a person in your life who's acting in their own self-interest to your detriment, and they don't appear willing to change, even after you explain how you're impacted by them, then it's time for you to firm up your boundaries and potentially even disengage. Michael's a tough one for me to grapple with over probably the last 10 episodes because he just, I mean, he's, he's, here's what's interesting. You want to talk about an interesting contrast between Michael and Trevor where they're essentially doing the same process, but they're doing it differently. They are both transparent. Trevor is just overtly transparent. Michael is passively transparent. Trevor will tell you exactly what his conviction is, exactly why he's doing what he's doing, and he will just he will be as matter of fact about it as he can possibly be. And so he's transparent in the sense that you know what you're getting from him, and you can mostly take him at his word. Michael, on the other hand, is transparent in his consistency and in his patterns. No matter what it is that he says, wants to say, no matter how he spins certain things, Michael is very clearly out for his own self-interest and most of the things he does falls in line with that particular process and pattern transparency comes in many different forms i think where they get frustrated with each other michael calls trevor a psychopath for being up front and trevor calls michael an asshole and a hypocrite and out of touch by not naming it and being open about it trevor just says like dude just take ownership of it you're very obviously out for yourself you're just acting like you aren't as if people don't see right through it. So transparency happens on different levels, and I think it's important for all of us to be mindful not just of how we are vocally explaining what we're doing, but also looking at patterns in our behavior and what does that say about us and what our potential values and what we bring to the table is. I'd say this went off pretty smoothly, though. We didn't really attract much attention from the cops. We were able to blow the fire truck up in the tunnel. That's pretty solid. You'll notice that when we alerted the homeless folks, nobody cared. When we alert the rich people, the police show up. Don't love that. Hey, this Lester crib, ain't it? It is, Franklin. It is. Keep your heads down, you hear? <laughs> Woo. Well. Uh-oh. I never thought I'd see you clowns again. We did it! <laughs> Fucking A-Ray, we oh, did it! Ah. Ow! How was it? For a suicidally dangerous mission impersonating emergency services while working a high security government facility, it was surprisingly uplifting. <laughs> this is the high.
This is the this is the dopamine hit. This is the this is the experience that is not possible for them to have in everyday life in retirement. This is what they chase. This is when you slay the boss after hours of working on it and you feel just absolutely elated. And this is the this is the moment that when they try to retire and get away from this life, they never forget. Nothing ever matches this experience that we just outsmarted a whole host of systems for our own personal gain. And you can't really oversell just how impactful that is on a person's psyche. This moves the bar. This is the this is I got this carrot, now I want to chase the bigger carrot. And if you're not careful and you don't work to rehabituate yourself to everyday life, you do run the risk of experiencing a uptick in depressive symptoms. And that's what we saw. We we see everybody super happy here. Lester's happy, Michael's thrilled. Everybody's fulfilled here because this scratches the itch. And it's super detrimental to them psychologically in addition to just putting them in danger in general. Come here. Give me oh. some of that. Hey. Ow. Ah. Ow. 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 Oh. Sorry, I forgot. You forgot my very, very obvious illness? <laughs> it happens. Uh, whatever. Hey, let's get drunk. Another example. Right, fill up the glasses. I've got some real vintage moonshine hillbilly type shit. We're going to be seeing triple and committing incest in minutes. <laughs> just the shit to make a man forget his trouble. Oh, exactly. I am just going to get drunk as a skunk. And then I'm going to reverse engineer a webcam and spy on those sorority girls again. <laughs> Yikes. I will, okay? Give me a break. Cheers. <laughs> <coughs> Man, that's some foul ass shit. Oh. <laughs> All right, boys, I hate to break up the ritual, but I gotta go square things up with Davy and Dick uh, For serious? Hey, I just want them to know that now that we did this thing for them, and we have the evidence that we did this thing for them, that we can all go our own separate ways, you know? Well, fuck it. You want me to go with you, dog? No, stay. Have fun. I gotta do this alone. Right now. The sooner the better. It's one way to look at it, eh? Right. <laughs> Besides, I wanna put this shit to bed. Then I can figure out Trevor, you know? Get my life back. Go back to being bored and miserable and loving every motherfucking minute of it. Here, enjoy the incest juice. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you boys sure know how to put the fun back in midlife crisis. Interesting. We'll see. Oy vey. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching episode 20. I hope you enjoyed it. Mostly mayhem tonight. But it was a pleasure to bring it to you. As always, leave a like before you leave. Subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on or off, whatever you prefer. And look forward to part 21. Check out all the links in the description. And I will see you on the next one.